Hello, this is Grant, and welcome back to a huge episode of Dead Rising 2 Master Run, episode 32. So we're going to get a ton of plot in this episode, so first things first, we're going to leave. We're going to get back to where we left off with Chuck entering this mysterious underground passage where all the zombies are headed. Particularly these gas zombies. So I'm going to let this kind of play out and talk as soon as we can get our control back. Oh, Dead Rising 2 cutscene loading. I'm amazed like that zombie has managed to keep his hat on this entire time. <laughs> I know it's just part of his model, but it seems a bit excessive. Or it's a, maybe it's a very tight hat. So essentially, the this high-pitched sound kills all these zombies. Particularly the gas zombies is what we're going to be using it against. I believe this is a designed flaw. As a way where they have like this built-in weakness that only these guys know. So that they can deal with these gas zombies, but the military cannot. So you notice these are all, all these queens are going to be sucked up into this huge device. Alright, so we got control back. So they notice Chuck here, and basically you can, yeah, if you're kind of noticing what's going on is they're collecting the queens. And I believe particularly the gas zombies react because they have queens inside them, generally. It's a little bit vague. I think the story is supposed to be that. That. <laughs> that, that. The story is supposed to be that the queen zombies are the ones that turn into the gas zombies. It kind of like singles them out, and then they are the most affected. And then they drag them in to the it's like underground thing, which I think Fortune City was built for this. Like I don't think they hauled in this machinery. I think this city was built to have this event happen. And that's why it has like this big underground complex just ready and, like waiting to go. You'll notice, like, if you look closely, you can that they reuse a lot of heads. Yeah. Like the reason he's wearing glasses and his clothes is that's the same guy that we played in poker, and he was also the bank run scoop. Same face, same undershirt, although he's wearing a suit in that case. So <laughs> I just thought this scene was weird. Like the whole point was like that's just that exposition he was talking about, and then there's this weird like fight, I guess. Where they just have handguns, and it's more annoying than it's hard, because they just keep staggering me. They don't do a lot of damage. If I had guns, I could deal with them really fast, because they're, they're weak. But it's just, <laughs> it's like, stop it. <laughs> stop shooting me in the face. I don't know, again, like, it's only for the delivery, but...
<laughs> I don't know. I hate his one-liners. Like, I'm usually a guy who likes puns and whatnot, but... Ah, that's too lowbrow for me. Like, do you do? Do you even try? So. We got our little pass, so that's going to open up this elevator here, which lets us get back down here, should we ever really need to. There's only, like, one case you would ever come back down here, and that's overtime mode, I think. So, but I guess if you really want to explore... So, basically, that's our big scoop, and now we're going to head on back with what we found and get some interesting little cutscenes. I feel like I can't, don't have much I can say in between like scenes here because it's just, it's waiting for big stuff like that to happen. Because now I can talk about, oh, so yeah, the idea is that they're harvesting the queens and that these zombies are kind of engineered to be tough but controllable so that it, the city can be lost, quote unquote, <laughs> even though it's like, oh, well, they want, they want this to happen. They haven't talked about why yet, but they need all these queens. So the city kind of needs to be lost because the only way to make more queens is to make more zombies. So some, someone's got to die for that to happen. I'm really tempted to do like a no save run. It'd be very risky, but it definitely looks be <laughs> it looks better if I never have to go in and save, but I'm not always confident in my abilities to do this all on the first try. Or at least I also try like I like making it interesting, like I could there's a lot of stuff you could do to be very proper and make sure you never lose, but at the same time, like that would suck. You know, having to be, like, all crazy and not, like, doing some of the more fun parts of the game. Like Psychopath Fights, it's much more entertaining to me if, like, he has one health, I have one health, and I go in and try to finish him off with, like, a kick. That's more entertaining than me, like, well, he's not going to heal, so I'll just come back and, like, I'll come back tomorrow. He'll still have one health. I'll be at full health. Health. I'll just, like, shoot him in the face and then end the quest. Like, well, that's kind of, it's kind of boring. Technically, that's a very safe thing, but I like, you know... I like risky stuff. I always play, like, the glass cannon whenever I play, like, games. Like, like when I play Borderlands, I play, like, zero, and I always go, like, very low health. Just constantly, like, push forward, go down, get up, go down, get up. Or I played Mass Effect not too long ago, I think, and it's the same thing. All about snipers with lots of damage, very low health. Just like the style I like playing. So I'm going to be definitely going to be quiet for this thing. Being a trans, <laughs> they make the Zombrex. She beat me to it. Supposed to die. 
So what a big cutscene. <laughs> I think a lot of people had it on their mind that that he was going to turn out to be evil. And I think that if you knew that, it really changes how his acting is. Like you'll notice like small little things he do he does or how he freaks out in terms of certain things. It's definitely kind of cool. I mean, you did kind of see it coming. It's like he just comes across as that kind of guy in my mind. So now we're got to head out and take him down. We'll get a call that about where he's headed, but he's essentially heading to the Yucatan rooftop, I believe it is. So we got to kind of catch him up there and finish him off. He's the last standard fight in the game, unless you do overtime mode, which since we fulfilled the other requirements, we will be doing over overtime mode on this playthrough. It's not taking cannon, like I said, but... I have actually never done overtime mode before. That's what I did die my first time through when I was trying to film it. So I was able to get a good, uh, some good experiences in because it overtime mode's hard. I'll say that. But essentially, we'll lose him, and then we're gonna need to call that. Oh yeah, he went over here. So it's kind of weird, like, the arrow always knows where to go. You don't. Stacy doesn't. But still. So I just want to say, I'm really amazed at the killed Rebecca Chang. I thought she was going to be a recurring character. Like, I felt like she was just, like, too much like Frank West. And I enjoyed her character. I was like, <laughs> I wasn't surprised when she died. Like, I didn't, like, cry or, like, gasp. But I was like, wow, really? Like, it'd be different if they killed, like, some other random character, but... I don't know, I feel like she has more involvement in the story than Stacy, but they make Stacy be like this kind of, I don't know, pseudo love interest, kind of like how, especially in overtime mode, like they don't ever actually talk about that much, but they definitely kind of, they kind of stay just like, what if situation, so. Hmm. So here I decide, you can go through the strip, but I wanted to really try driving this car over to the Yucatan instead. It's, it's a little bit faster if you don't crash, it's definitely safer. But I just haven't done it in a while, so I was like, hey, you know what? I'll give it a shot. At this point, honestly, the game's pretty sandboxy and open. You have a lot of time to get these objectives done, and they aren't too terribly difficult. Like, well, once you actually get to the fight, yeah, maybe, but you just kind of need to wander over there eventually. There's nothing else you really need to do because they don't have any other survivor scoops at this point. I would say you could grind for cash. That'd be a good time for it if you are going for the zombie genocider achievement and you are wanting to get some extra time for that by doing the story missions obviously you would go continue killing zombies in the silver strip but personally I don't know I, when I crash the reason I crashed there is in Dead Rising 1 you would often get thrown from the car like thrown forward and so my goal was I was hoping I would get thrown forward through the doorway I thought, like, oh, man, wouldn't that be a cool little, like, g gimmick speedrunning trick to, like, launch yourself through the door so you can just instantly load to the next area without getting out of the car. Hi. Sadly, I don't I don't give it be that amazing sexy. So you'll notice I grab the sonic rifle or whatever it's called. So this only kills gas zombies. You can upgrade it to the BFG 9000, I think if you have a amplifier which makes it kill normal zombies and it is an outstanding weapon it is by far one of the best zombie killing weapons in the game it's essentially imagine a gun that shoots 10 queens or has it shoots one queen but it can do it 10 times so it just destroys crowds and it kills gas zombies in one hit still so it can clear some serious house in this game at this at this point that being said you only get like 10 shots so you you kind of want to save them up but it is definitely worth having like one in your inventory. I don't know how it affects psychopaths. Like I said, you can get one of these guns in the underground if you know where to look at any point in the game. 
And so I assume you could go make get the BFG as well at any point in the game if you really wanted to. And it might be something I test. For all I know, it might just like... <laughs> it might one-shot Psychos. So... But this is an interesting little area. This is actually part of the boss fight we got coming up. That's why it's kind of a weird situation. But I figured I wanted to heal up and prep. Sent to the boss fight, during it, you're going to knock holes in the ceiling and you'll get knocked down here. And that actually makes the boss fight easier because it gives you a brief respite. So you can heal up, you can kind of reorient to yourself. He won't constantly kill you. The downside is there's a bunch of zombies down here that can kind of respawn. Like, this hallway doesn't seem to respawn that much, which is why I kind of wanted to just clear it out, as well as make sure I used up some of the weaker weapons in my inventory. It's like things that we're going to break soon. But here we go. It's going to be off to the final fight of 72-hour mode in Dead Rising 2. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, check out one of the links below. Until next time, don't take your zombie safety for granted.